Hello, guys. Uh, welcome back to Mezon African Motives. Uh, we are still on our revisions, uh, working on the introduction and so forth. Uh, so we're not going to waste much of your time, guys. Here we are going to be focusing on our trigonometry. We are still on our trigonometry, but this part is of the 2D, uh, the introduction of our 2D actually working with our triangles, the one that we are going to end up having the angles of elevation, uh, the angle of depression at the end. But in this case, I want you to understand how to work with a, a right angled triangle in the calculation of uh, sides, uh, which is very, very important in our syllabus to calculate the given sides and also to calculate the given angles in the application of our uh, trigonometric ratios. So this is the major part of your two, uh, of your 2D uh, whereby you are dealing with a right angle triangle. You are working with a right angle triangle. That's the major part of your 2D. So you are going to see that, like I said, applications such as the angle of elevation, this and that, we shall talk about that later on. So we are given, if we are given back, let us consider back our right angle triangle. I want us to consider what we used to talk about on this right angle triangle. Remember, I told you that on a right angle triangle, the sides of the triangle are determined according to the angle that you are given, which is, uh, you can refer to as theta, alpha, whatever angle that you are given. The angle that you are given is the one that determines the sides. So according to theta, this side is your opposite. So remember that this is your opposite. Uh, theta and 90 degrees, they are sitting next to each other. They are found next to each other on this line. So they are adjacent to each other. Then always the one that faces the 90 degrees is the longest side, which is the hypotenuse. All right. With this, we talked about also the trigonometric ratios that we can obtain from a right angled triangle. From our mnemonics, we talked about the idea of the Soka Toa, all right? We talked about this uh, Soka Toa, that we can use these ratios to determine sides. Remember I talked about this, that the trigonometry part is used in the calculation of side, this part of a right angled triangle. Once you are given the angle, or once you are given the two sides, or you want to calculate the angle, you can use the uh, ratios that you're given, not forgetting that the sine of theta is going to be opposite over the hypotenuse. So we are going to have the sine of theta being the opposite over the hypotenuse, all right? We talked about this also. Uh, the cosine of the angle theta, which is being at the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So this is your adjacent over the hypotenuse. In this case, then you move on to the tan of theta, which is our angle, which is the opposite over the adjacent. So that's the opposite over the adjacent in that case. These ratios can be used to calculate sides. So they can be used, can be used uh, to calculate, all right, can be used uh, to calculate, all right. The first thing that we're gonna calculate are sides, all right? So let us just put it this way, sorry for that. So we are going to calculate the first thing, like I indicated, are the sides, all right? So we are going to calculate the sides, also to calculate the angles, all right? Meaning to say we can use the trigonometric ratios to calculate the sides and also to calculate the angles. How do we do, how do we calculate sides or angles from our trigonometric ratios? That is the question. All right, this is what, how we are going to apply your questions. Let us consider the first question that we are given here. Exercise number five, we are given round answers of to one decimal place in this exercise. So in this exercise that we have, we are supposed to round off to one decimal place. Calculate the length of PQ in triangle PQR. So we want to calculate the length of PQ in this triangle PQR. This is the length of PQ, this side here. So what you do is that, guys, you be careful about this. You name the side that you are supposed to calculate. Yes, we know that our triangle is we are supposed to name like everything, uh, opposite, adjusted, everything. But if you are to calculate for an unknown value, which can be the side or the angle, just name the part that you want to calculate 
which is PQ, according to the angle that we are given of 42 degrees, what is the side PQ representing? Remember I said the angle of 90 degrees and the angle that you are given, if they are on the same line, that is they are adjacent to each other. So that's the adjacent. The side that we focus first on the side to be calculated. The side to be calculated is PQ. That's where you focus on, okay? Then you move on to what you are given. Given what? What are we given? We are given, in this case, this side, which is three. Uh, that face is the, the, the 90 degrees, which is the right angle. And we know that it, it is going to be the hypotenuse in this case. This is the only part that you put your eyes on, you focus on those two. Yes, you know that this side here, QR here, is the opposite according to 42 degrees. It faces is the opposite. But don't worry about that because the moment you write this opposite, you end up having a confusion. The reason why I'm saying because you want to calculate for an unknown side or unknown angle. So what you ask yourself is that there is only one ratio. This is what you know, all right? Uh, sorry for that. There is only one ratio. That is what we know. That has got the adjacent and the hypotenuse at the same time. There is only one ratio. Which ratio is it? That has got the adjacent, the side that we want to calculate, and the hypotenuse, the side that we are given. So we go back to our trigonometric ratios. Let us check. There is only one ratio that has got adjacent and the hypotenuse. Which ratio is it? Adjacent and hypotenuse. We see it here on what? On cos. Adjacent and hypotenuse. So we are going to take the ratio of cos, which states that cos, because we, have, we are focusing, guys, on what we want to calculate and what we are given. Don't focus on this, guys. You, you don't want this side. You are, not to, you are not told about this side. Don't focus about this. Leave it like that. Focus on what you are given. So you focus on what? Adjacent and hypotenuse. So this is the ratio for, for cos. If you check, there is no other ratio here that has got adjacent and hypotenuse at the same time. Here there is opposite and hypotenuse, not adjacent and hypotenuse at the same time. It only occurs on what? On cos. So you write down your ratio. This is what you're going to do. We are now answering our question here. All right, so this is the first part. So what you're going to do, remember, we want to calculate what? PQ. We want to calculate the length of PQ. We do not know this. All right. So what you're going to do is that you write down your ratio first. Remember, we said the ratio that consists of what? Adjacent and the hypotenuse. So you write down uh, your ratio. We said it's from what? From cos. As it is cos theta. Remember, theta represents the angle. So cos theta is equal to, write your ratio as it is adjacent over the hypotenuse. This is what you're going to do. You write your ratio as it is. So this is the ratio that consists of the sides that we are given and that we want to calculate. So what you do is that you fill in the formula. You are going to fill in, all right? Fill in the values, all right, given. So which values are we given? That is the, those ones. Those are the ones that you're gonna fill in in this equation. We are given theta, remember theta represents the angle. This is our angle. So meaning to say we have the angle in this case. What is the angle? The angle is what? 42 degrees. This is the angle that you, you take the angle that you used to name this side because they might also give you this angle. So you don't work with this. You work with the one that you used to name the sides. All right. So this is going to be cos. We are now filling in the information. The angle theta, which is 42 degrees is equal to, you equate to your ratio, which is adjacent. Adjacent represents what? The side PQ, which is the side that we are supposed to calculate PQ. So you are going to write it as what? As PQ, because you do not have this side. So it is going to be PQ, that is your adjacent. Over the hypotenuse, what is our hypotenuse? Our hypotenuse is what? Is three. So you have filled according to what you are given. So what is it that you're supposed to calculate? It's PQ. So what are you going to do? You are going to solve for PQ. So it's an equation now. We are back to an equation, guys. How do you solve, uh, how do you solve an equation? How do you solve an equation? You can cross multiply. This is same as over one. So we are going to cross multiply this 
multiplies this side, all right? So it multiplies this side, this multiplies this side, all right? So if you multiply take note here, you multiply the number, yes, like there's a one. So it's one cos 42. So three multiplies the number that is here, not this here. It does not multiply the angle. It multiplies the number that is on this side. So it is going to be what? It is going to be three times one cos 42. So it's going to be three cos uh, 42 degrees, which is equal to one times PQ. So it's gonna be one PQ, of which one PQ represents what? Is the same as PQ. All right, so there we are, guys. We want to calculate PQ and already this is what we have. So whatever that I'm going to calculate here, it represents PQ, all right? So that means your PQ is going to be equal to the answer that you're going to get here. And remember they said to one decimal place, they gave us an instruction here to one decimal place. So let us simplify on our calculator. This is what you could not have. Uh, so on your calculator, this is what you're going to do. You're going to multiply three cos 42. So this is three cos uh, 42 degrees like this. So as we can see, our answer is going to be two comma two, two like that. So for you to round off to two decimal place, you can do that on your calculator. That is shift, you go to the mod, all right? Uh, on this mod, go to number six, all right? Mod, go to number six where it's written fix, number six. So you want to round off to one decimal place. Remember, to one decimal place. So you press one. It rounds off to one decimal place automatically for you. So that is going to be 2,2. Two. So this is going to be 2,2 uh, two, like this, all right? Uh, so that is the length of PQ. We are not given uh, the units in this case to say these are centimeters or these are meters. So just leave it like that since you're not given guys, right? But that is the length of what? The length of PQ. So as you can see guys, this is how we use our trigonometrical uh, ratios to calculate for any side or any angle. Like I said, it can be used to calculate a side or to calculate an angle. The trigonometrical ratios can be used to calculate any, it can be a side, or it can be an angle, which is different from Pythagoras theorem. Pythagoras is only for calculating sides, right? You do not use Pythagoras theorem to calculate an angle. You use it to calculate unknown sides. All right, let us move on to B1. Calculate the length of AB on this triangle here. We need the length of AB and also the length of BC. So what you do is that work question by question so that you don't fall into a confusion. You see what how they ask? It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a trapping. They want to trap you there. They know that you name everything and you'll be confused by that. Name what you want at, 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 at the moment. What are you working with at the moment, all right? So that's number one. Let us work with AB. So number one, we are gonna calculate the length of AB. We do not know this. All right, so let us name our triangle according to the angle theta, focusing on what we want to calculate, all right? Like I said, keep, your eyes on what you want to calculate. What are you supposed to calculate? It's AB. So according to the angle of 67, what does the side AB, this one, represent? Was well, this is the one that you want to calculate. According to our angle that you are given, this AB represents the opposite. It is opposite to 67. So you have the opposite, all right? This is what you want to calculate. What are you given? All right, we are given this side, of 5,6, which faces 90 degrees. And you know the side that faces 90 degrees is our hypotenuse. So we are given there the hypotenuse. So this is what you focus on. Don't focus on BC. BC is something else that you, you will calculate later on. Don't focus on that BC. Focus on what you want to calculate, which is what AB. So according to this, we can see, according to this angle, AB, the side that you want to calculate, is the opposite, the side that you are given. So what you want to calculate, what you are given, focus on those two. So look for a ratio that consists of this, the hypotenuse and the opposite at the same time. We have a ratio that has got opposite and hypotenuse at the same time. So let's go opposite and hypotenuse at the same time is found on sign opposite and hypotenuse at the same. 
time, there is no ratio that has got opposite and hypotenuse at the same time here, except for this one for sine. So it states that the sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. Write it as it is. Sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So let us write it down. Uh, we saw that the sine of theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So if we know this, therefore, like I said before, fill in your values, what you are given. So it is going to be the sine of theta. Theta represents the angle. So the angle that we are focusing with was the angle of 67 degrees. So the sine of 67 degrees must be equal to the opposite the opposite, which is AB. This is your opposite. So it is going to be AB, our opposite, over the hypotenuse. We have the hypotenuse here, which is what? 5,6. Because already this formula is the one that corresponds to what we, we talked about. So definitely everything is going to be filled in because you used that formula or you took that formula after you, you had uh, to check on your diagram to say, what is it that I am given? So according to this, we can calculate AB because remember I said this is now an equation. So this is same as over one, all right? So you can cross multiply. So 5,6 is going to multiply this side. One is going to multiply this side. But like I said, the number here multiplies also the number on side, not the angle, but it multiplies the number. So it's 5,6 times one, which is 5,6, the sine, of 67 degrees is equal to one. It multiplies AB, so that's one times AB, which is AB. So already, as we can see, AB as a subject already, it is the, already the one that we want to calculate here. So we can just write as it is to say AB is equal to, we just have to simplify this as it is on our calculator. All right, so we are going to calculate this on our calculator. But remember also on, on our calculator, we had already fixed our calculator to one decimal place. Remember what we did here, we, we have already fixed our calculator to one decimal place. So meaning to say it automatically, our answer is going to be one decimal place. So it's 5,6, the sine of 67 degrees, sine of 67 degrees like this, you get 5,6. Comma two. So this one is going to give us 5,2. That's AB. So AB is going to be uh, 5,2. As you can see here, we are not given to say it's meters or it's centimeters or what. So just leave it like that. All right. So that's we have got AB in this case, this one. So to find BC, you can use your Pythagoras theorem. But here, I want us to focus on the ratio. So uh, it's fine like that. All right. So the next question was to calculate the length of BC. So like I said, you could have uh, you could have used Pythagoras theorem to calculate this because you now have AB. But I do not want us to do that. I want us to go back to the trigonometrical ratios that we are talking about so that we properly understand this topic together. All right. So this time, uh, it's another part of the question. This is now uh, B, all right? This is now two, all right? So this is now two. You, we are supposed this time, to calculate uh, BC, all right. So that means we are supposed to remove this because now we are focusing on BC. Remember I said, you take the sides, you take information on what you are supposed to calculate and what you are given. What are you supposed to calculate? It's BC, this side. What is it representing according to the angle of 67? This angle and 90 degrees are found on this line together. So that's our adjacent. They are sitting on the same line. So meaning to say, uh, this is what we want to calculate. What are we given? We are given this side. So like I said, you can use that one that you calculated, but it's best for you to go back and use the information from the original uh, one that because maybe that value was wrong. It means you are going to obtain a wrong value. So it's best for you to go back to the original question, use original values that you were given before. That is the exact values that you were given before. All right, so let us go back and check on those ratios. The ratio this time that uses the adjacent and the hypotenuse at the same time. I think we used such ratio before, adjacent and hypotenuse, which is for cos. Remember, cos adjacent over the hypotenuse. So you're going to take your ratio of cos here. So we're gonna write our ratio 
the cosine of theta according to our ratio, guys, we saw that it's what adjacent over the hypotenuse. So that is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And what I said is that you fill in your information. So it is the cosine, the cos of theta. Theta, the angle that you are given of 67 degrees is equal to the adjacent. The adjacent, which is the one that we are supposed to calculate our adjacent, which is the side BC. So we are going to fill in that is uh, BC over the hypotenuse in this case, which is the one that we are given as uh, 5,6. So thus, we have formulated an equation that we are supposed to solve. So like I said, this whole thing is same as it's over one. So we can be able to, to cross multiply. So like I said, guys, we saw that I was multiplying this number to this. You can also do, because cross multiplication is in your hands. Cross multiplication, it's in your hands. I can even multiply this in one times BC, which is BC is equal to, then I multiply this side, all right? So it's going to be 5,6 times one, this side, which is uh, 5,6, the cos of 67 degrees. It's one and the same. One times this, this times, or I could have started by writing this and followed by BC, guys. It's one and the same thing, all right? So now we can calculate our BC direct. On our calculator, we can simplify this part. So there we just need our calculator to calculate our BC. And we fixed our calculator, remember, already to one decimal place. So it is going to give us our answer direct to one decimal place. So that's cos uh, 67 degrees like this. And this is going to give us uh, 2 comma 2, all right? So this is going to be uh, 2 comma 2. That is how we're supposed to attempt uh, such questions. So you just have to be careful how you attempt your questions in your revisions, it's very, very important that you do revise properly. All right, so uh, let us check the other part here. Uh, that's another question. Remember, everything is just one decimal place, but it's now another question here, which is uh, on uh, C. All right, so on C, this time is the theta. We are asked you to calculate the size of theta. Theta represents the angle. This theta here is the angle, all right? So let us check what we want to calculate. Uh, so that is one, all right. So that is one of this question here. So like I said, guys, it, it is very, very important that you note the information that you are supposed to calculate, all right? We are supposed to calculate theta, which is true. So according, but it, as we know, guys, the, the sides, they are named according to theta. This is what we know. The sides are named according to theta. So already we are given the theta here and we want to calculate. So we just take the side that we are given. What is it that we are given according to theta? We have got this side of seven, which faces theta is opposite to theta. So that means we have the opposite here. Uh, nine, the side that we are given here is the adjacent theta and 90 degrees are ad adjacent to each other on this side. So we have got the opposite and the adjacent. So which ratio uses the opposite and the adjacent at the same time from our Sokatoa concept, we need the ratio that he has got opposite adjacent at the same time. Do we have such ratio? All right, don't focus with this hypotenuse because there's nothing there. You are not given anything. There's nothing. So we need where there's opposite and adjacent at the same time. So we can see that it is there on tan. This is the one that has got the opposite and adjacent at the same time. So it states that the tan of theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. Opposite over the adjacent, I mean, that's the opposite over the adjacent. So we can fill in what we are given. The tan of theta is equal to the opposite. What is your opposite? Your opposite is seven over the adjacent. What is your adjacent? Your adjacent is nine. But the question is this, guys, be, be, be careful. Yeah, yeah, I want you to be, to, to be very careful here on this stage. Please pay attention here on this part. I want you to be very, very careful here. This is theta, which is the angle, this one. The theta here is the angle. But we are saying tan theta, tan, 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 tan theta is equal to. So we are back to those equations that we used to solve, remember, from our trigonometry, those trigonometric equations. 
How do you calculate theta when you are given that tan theta is equal to a fraction? You remove the tan this side, write it on the other side as arctan. So meaning to say to have theta, which is the angle, I'm going to write it on the other side as arctan of seven over nine as a fraction as it is. Now I get the angle. The angle here on the other side, it's arctan. If it was sine, arc sine, if it is cos, arc cos. Remember, arc cos, it's uh, arc tan, it's, it's simply a uh, shift tan on your calculator. All right, so let us go to our calculator, guys. Uh, that is, we need arc tan, so it's going to be shift uh, tan here, seven over nine. So this is seven over nine like this. All right, so this is going to give us uh, 37,9 uh, degrees. So that is uh, 37,9 degrees. And remember, the theta that you are talking about is the angle in this case. So it's going to be in degrees. So that is how we can calculate our angle in that manner. Uh, in that manner, we can use our trigonometric ratio. Like I said, we can use trigonometric ratios to calculate sides. We can use them to calculate angles. So as you can see, this question was on calculating angle theta. This is how you simply apply it. All right, so let us check the other part. They also uh, want us to calculate the length this time of AC, the length of AC. So to calculate the length of AC, since we have the angle, we can use our angle or we can use uh, Pythagoras theorem. Remember, we talked about uh, Pythagoras theorem uh, in the previous case. So this time, let us just use our Pythagoras theorem, guys, because uh, uh, it's a revision actually here. So this theta is not that important. All right, so we're just gonna apply AC. To calculate AC, which is this side, we can just use Pythagoras because we are given two sides and we want to calculate this third side. So remember that Pythagoras theorem starts, uh, states that the hypotenuse squared is equal to A squared plus B squared, which are the shorter sides. So C squared simply represents the hypotenuse. Don't focus to say this is B, this are C is the hypotenuse, which is the side to be calculated. This is our hypotenuse, this one. The one that faces what? 90 degrees. So we are going to have a c squared is equal to a squared and b squared. These are the shorter sides. So the shorter sides would be seven and nine. So that will be seven squared plus nine squared. All right, so with this guys, we can be able to calculate the value of a c, which is the side. So that is a c squared is equal to, so we can combine this at once. Uh, remember seven squared means seven times seven, which is going to be 49 plus, Nine squared means nine times nine, which is going to be uh, 81, right? So we can add the two numbers, uh, 49 and uh, 81 together, which is going to be something like 129, all right? So that is what you're gonna have in that case. Then to find AC, you are simply going to introduce the square root to remove this square here. You introduce the square root, uh, both sides, the square root, both sides, so that means our AC is going to be the square root of 129. Uh, that is the square root here of 129. So let us just give our calculator. Uh, sorry for that. All right, so here, the square root of 129 like this, which gives us, uh, change this to a decimal here. That's 11, uh, 4, all right? So this one is going to give us 11, 4. All right, we are not given to say it's centimeters or it's meters or what, just leave it like that, right? So that is how we could have calculated the length AC. All right, so as you can see, this is how the questions are being given, guys. You just have to be careful uh, when you are simplifying your questions. Then we've got the D where you are given. Uh, calculate the first equation, the size of alpha, all right? So this is uh, alpha. So to calculate the size of alpha, which is this angle, you work according to the angle that you are given that you want to calculate. You name these sides according to the angle alpha, all right? So according to angle alpha, this side is the adjacent. It is sitting, uh, this alpha and 90 degrees are on the same side. So they are adjacent to each other. The one that faces the right angle is your hypotenuse. So these are the sides that we are given according, according to alpha, according to this angle that you are calculating, not according to theta. Theta is another question. We shall see that one later on. So assume as if this is not there. Assume as if theta is not there. That is the, that is the condition. 
If you take it that way, you won't go wrong. So that means I'm going to write my formula, the one that has got adjacent and the hypotenuse at the same time from our soccer tower concept, which one that has got the adjacent and the hypotenuse at the same time, it's for cos. So we are going to write our formula. The cos of theta is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse, that is what we are given. But this time it's not theta, it's what? It's alpha. So we are going to write it as the cos of the angle, which is our angle that we are focusing there is what? It's alpha. So the cos of alpha should be equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So we are going to fill in according to our triangle now. We have this, uh, so we're going to have the cos of alpha, which is equal to, remember, according to alpha here, we said our adjacent is going to be this side, which is six. So this one is going to be six over the hypotenuse. You go back to this triangle, our hypotenuse is what? Is 10. So we are going to have uh, six over 10 like this. All right, so how do I calculate alpha now? Remember what I said, to find the angle, this one, you find arc of the trig that you have here, which is cos. So it's going to be arc cos. So alpha, which is our angle, this angle here is going to be equal to arc cos. That is arc cos like this of this part that you have. Whether you write it as a fraction or you write it as a decimal, that part does not matter. All right, so that is, you are going to obtain the angle alpha in this case. All right, so let us uh, see what you're going to have on our calculator. That is arc cos, which is shift cos uh, six over 10, all right? So it's gonna be shift cos six over 10, which gives us uh, 53 comma one uh, degrees. So this is going to be 53 comma one uh, degrees, all right? So that is how we could have uh, calculated our angle alpha in that case. So we now have our angle alpha in this diagram here. We now have this angle alpha uh, inside of our diagram, okay? So that is uh, alpha here is uh, 53, that was 53,1. So this is uh, 53,1, okay? 53,1 uh, degrees. All right, so that's it. So like I said, you calculate this angle according to the information that you are what you are given. So the second question was to calculate the angle theta. All right, so in case of this nature, guys, we can just use the properties of a triangle to calculate angle theta. Remember that angles in a triangle theta up to 180 degrees, but you can also use the ratios, which I'll prove that one later on, but I want you to see what I'm trying to say. We could have used angles in a triangle because we know that angles in a triangle, they add up to 180 degrees. So remember 90 degrees represents uh, 90, uh, this right angle represents 90 degrees. So I've got an angle of 90, I've got an angle of 53 comma one. I'm left with theta to complete to give me 180 degrees. So what am I going to do to find the angle theta? I'm simply going to subtract these two angles from 180 because if I add all these angles, they are supposed to give us what, or you can just add, all right? You can just add, if you have a confusion, add theta plus uh, 53 comma one like this, plus 90 degrees is supposed to give us 180 degrees. That is sum of angles in a triangle, right? So what you're going to do is to simplify from there, you calculate your, your theta. All right, so let us calculate our theta and see, so our theta, we are going to add 90 to 53, comma one degrees, all right? We already have uh, 53 comma one here. So we're just gonna add 90 degrees, which is going to give us 143 comma one, all right? So this is going to be plus 143 comma one comma one degrees, which is equal to 180 degrees. So to find theta, we can transpose this to the other side. It becomes a negative since it is a positive. So theta, is going to be equal to 180 degrees minus 143 comma one degrees. If we take it on that side, it becomes a negative. So thus we have the exact angle of uh, theta. So theta is going to be 180 minus uh, 143 comma one degrees, all right? Which is going to give us uh, 36 comma nine. So this is 36 comma uh, nine degrees, all right? So that is how we could have uh calculated our angle theta in that manner 
uh, we could have taken it in a way that these are angles in a triangle, whereby angles in a triangle, they add up to 180 degrees. All right, but we want to check, are we going to obtain the same theta on a condition that, all right, let me just put this way before I remove this, all right? Before I remove this, let me just go back a little bit. Sorry for that. So I wanted to check, are you going to have the same theta, which is 36,9, this one, from the same triangle that we have here? without using the angle that I calculated. Because if this angle is wrong, it means theta is going to be also wrong. So how can I avoid that? I can go back to the normal triangle that I had this one. Now I have to calculate theta according to theta now. You name your sides according to theta. We want to go back to our trigonometrical ratios. If we can do that, that means we are now understand this topic. You can go back there and use Back, uh, your, 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 your ratios to calculate your theta. So how, how so? All right, according to the angle of theta, which is this angle, you are going to see that this side now is the opposite, all right? It is facing angle theta. So six is the opposite according to, according to theta, all right? So this one is not there. Don't consider this, it's not there. We are now focusing on what? On theta. This is the one that we are focusing on this one. So this is our opposite. But as we can see, 10 does not change because it is facing 90 degrees. So it is always our hypotenuse. So we now have opposite and hypotenuse. You ask yourself which ratio uses what? Opposite and hypotenuse at the same time from our mnemonics, uh, Sokatoa. There is only one ratio there, only one that has got opposite and hypotenuse which is the one for sine opposite and hypotenuse. Write down your ratio. So it states that the sine of the angle, our angle theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. Just fill in as it is opposite over hypotenuse. Then you substitute what you are given according to theta now. So you're going to write that the sine of theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse according to our information. Our opposite is this side, which is six, and the hypotenuse, which is 10. So it is going to be six over six over 10. Opposite, we said it's six, hypotenuse is 10. So this is supposed to be the ratio of sine theta. So what is the value for the angle theta? Not the ratio, but the angle now. So remember to find the angle theta, you are going to write this side as arc sine, arc of the ratio that you're given. So it's going to be arc sine six over six over 10. So thus you have the angle theta now. So the angle theta being arc sine of six over 10, you can simplify it direct on your calculator. Uh, that is going to be arc sine, all right, of six over over 10. All right, remember we fixed our calculator before to one decimal place. So our answer is going to be to one decimal place, which is 36. So as we can see, we are obtaining one and the same value as the last answer that we got when we used angles in a triangle. This is to show you guys that it's one and the same thing. So that's the advantage of knowing your ratios. Uh, you can use whatever that you want and also to know the properties of the shape that you are working with. Yes, you know your ratios, but also you need to know the properties of the shape, the shape that you are working with. We are talking about a triangle. Angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. All right, so as you can see, guys, it's just, just a repetition of what we calculated and got the same answer. Uh, let us check the last question of this part that I just took on this exercise, which is calculate the length of AC. So this is AC according to the angle of 67 degrees. Uh, we are given AC, so uh, we, are give, we want to calculate AC. So what is AC representing? This is. Uh, hypotenuse according to uh, 90 degrees here, we've got the hypotenuse. What about eight? According to 67, eight is uh, uh, the adjacent side. These two are adjacent to each other. So we have eight as our adjacent side, right? So this is our adjacent. So just name these two only, the ones that you want to calculate and what you are given. Don't focus about A, B. It's another question that we're gonna focus on later on. So which ratio uses adjacent and hypotenuse at the same time. We are back to course again, all right? 
which is from our soccer to our courses adjacent and the hypotenuse at the same time. So we're going to write our ratio, the cosine of the angle theta is equal to the adjacent over over the hypotenuse. So if it is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse, what is our theta? Theta is the angle and our angle is 67 degrees. So the cosine of 67 degrees is equal to the adjacent, which is the side of BC, which is eight over the hypotenuse, which is the side that we are supposed to calculate, which is AC like this. All right, what a much complicated, not that complicated, but just it's not direct. Just like uh, the other questions, if you saw, they were just direct to calculate AC. This time, look where AC is. It is in the denominator. But the idea, it does not change. The idea is that we are supposed to cross multiply to remove our fraction, multiply this side by AC, multiply this side by AC, or to just remove fraction, just multiply by AC, multiply by AC, it removes AC. So here it's a one. So that's AC times one, which is going to be AC, all right? Cos of what? Cos of 67 degrees is equal to one times eight, which is going to give you eight. That's it. So you can solve for AC. It's a multiplication that is happening between AC and cos 67. So how do you remove something that is multiplying? You remove it by dividing by that term. So you're going to divide by what is multiplying, which is cos of 67 degrees. You also divide this side by cos of 67 degrees. So that these two, since they are the same, they will cancel cos 67 and cos 67. You remain with what? You remain with AC. So this is going to give you uh, the value of AC. So AC is going to be eight over cos of 67 degrees, all right? So you can just use your calculator to simplify this as it is. All right, so let us see. Just put in our values, that is eight over the cos of 67. So that's cos of 67 like this. Uh, that is going to be 20,5, all right? So AC is going to be 20,5. And uh, according to the units, we are not given the units. So that'll be just 20,5 like that. Just have to leave it like that, okay? So that's it. Uh, let us check the AB so you can use this side, use your Pythagoras theorem, which is fine, but I don't want us to do that. I want us to focus on the trig again, just like that previous question. Let us go back to our trig uh, ratios and see. This time we want to calculate AB. So we have to work with our angle of 67. According to our angle of 67, what is AB representing? AB is the opposite. According to this side, AB faces this side. So we have got the opposite. What about BC? BC is the adjacent according to 67, that's the adjacent. So we go back to our ratios. There's only one ratio that uses what? Opposite and adjacent at the same time. Which ratio is it from our soccer tour? Uh, we are going to see that ratio is from the opposite adjacent, which is from tan, opposite adjacent, which states that the tan of theta, so we are on number two guys to calculate AB. So it states that the tan of theta is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So we are simply going to fill in your information that is the tan of theta, which is the angle that I'm given of 67 degrees is equal to the opposite, the side that I'm supposed to calculate, which is AB over the adjacent side, which is the one that I'm given, which is eight. So it is going to be like this over, over eight. So this is how you're supposed to calculate your side AC. Just go back to your ratios, apply, your ratios, and after that, you can be able to calculate the length uh, of uh, AB. That is AB, yes, AB, right? So you can cross multiply, like I said before. So this one is a little bit direct because AB is in the what is it in the numerator, so it's just gonna multiply here by one, eight multiplies this side. So like I said, you can just multiply one times AB because you want to find AB. So you can even start by one. One times AB is AB which is equal to eight, it multiplies everything on this side. So it is going to be eight, uh, the tan of 67 degrees. So that's, we have got the side AB. So AB is going to be given as eight tan 67, all right? So eight tan 67 degrees, we just need our calculator also here. All right, so let us see guys, what we are going to obtain here. Uh, that's eight tan, 
of 67 degrees like this. So this is going to give us 18,8, uh, all right? So you're gonna obtain 18,8. Uh, that is the side representing what? Representing AB. So if it is centimeters, you use centimeters. If it is meters, you use meters, you use the units that you are given. So these are the typical questions. Uh, that would be the introduction actually that you need to know uh, on our 2D uh, uh, trigonometry. Because like I said, if you are working with uh, the angles of elevation, the angles of depression, whatever that we're talking about now is what we are going to be doing on those exercises. Whatever that we are talking about, we are going to be applying, working with the same ratios. The only difference is the type of question, how, how it is given. But whatever that you're given, it will bring you back to a right angle triangle. Once it brings you back to a right angle triangle, meaning to say, you are back to the trigonometric uh, ratios. So make sure that you watch the video on trig ratios where we talked about the introduction of the trig ratios uh, so that you understand this because it's an application, it's a continuation of all those uh, parts that we talked about. But uh, guys, that's it. We shall see, uh, like I said, uh, on different class working on angles of elevation and angles of depression and also to apply question papers on those exercises.